Hey, this is Jay, and this is a quick tutorial for webhooks using N8N. So this one's going to be a little bit different. Unfortunately, webhooks are probably going to be uh, quite a bit different based on which platform you're using. Uh, in this case, I'm actually going to demo monday.com's webhook system, um, but your mileage may vary depending on what you're trying to connect. But at least the concept is basically the same. So uh, essentially, you create a connection between the platform. So in this case, I'm using monday.com. When something changes in monday.com, N8N can see that change. It gets notified through the webhook, and then it can make uh, you know, fire off the, the workflow and make changes based on what happens. Um, so in this case, all it's doing is really just creating some some uh, arbitrary data in a Google Sheet. Um, but we'll go ahead and demo that real quick. So right now I have a webhook set up in monday.com that if I change an item to the status of invoiced, uh, we'll see it says an automation is running. It was completed. And then if we come down here, uh, should see a new row get added into the spreadsheet. And there we go. So that's all that's happening here. This web, this uh, workflow is listening for that webhook to happen. And then when it does, uh, it comes down here and adds some data from the monday.com board. Um, there is an if statement here because uh, <laughs> when you're setting up uh, the webhook, you actually have to grab the challenge data and send it back. So that's where this respond to webhook uh, comes in. So it actually kind of took two steps to really get this thing uh, up and running. So I'll go ahead and walk through that process a little bit more. And again, this is, this is kind of specific to monday.com. Some other webhooks may not work exactly like this. So I uh, have to kind of uh, look at this at a, in a, at a more high level as far as like webhooks versus, uh, you know, specific platforms. Honestly, I would probably most of the time just go with a schedule uh, over a webhook just because it's a little bit easier, especially using cron. Like I actually have a video that talks about uh, setting up like pretty specific scheduling systems. And that way they just run a few times a day and do what you need to do as opposed to having to go through the trouble of setting up webhooks. But if you need the responsiveness of somebody changing a status, you need something to change based on that in another system, then a webhook can be really powerful if you need it. Uh, it just can also lead to a lot of extra runtime as opposed to a scheduled trigger, which you can just run through things in batch. So again, uh, depending on your situation, you might not really need a webhook, but if you need to, let's go ahead and get it going. So when you create a webhook trigger, you get a default URL like this. And you might notice I'm actually using the cloud version of N8N. You could use it through self-hosted, but it just you're going to have to get into probably some networking to be able to have your local instance connect to other apps. Um, so might be easier to just stick with the cloud version of N8N. Uh, at that point, you probably already know what you're doing if you're doing local hosted networking, stuff like that. Um, but by default, it starts off with this path of just a, a UID. Um, so you can actually update this to be whatever you want. Uh, so I'll say uh, just probably it doesn't really matter. If we're gonna, I'm going to do something like Monday status change. Uh, just so it's a little more readable. It's more of an organization kind of thing. Uh, and then in this case, I think we actually need a post, not a get, um, be able to get the data back. Uh, and then one other thing is that it, we could run it immediately to get things started. Um, but I think, uh, at, at least in this case, monday.com is actually going to require a challenge. Um, so we need it to send back. So we need to respond to the webhook node or respond using uh, the uh, webhook node as opposed to um, just immediately replying. And so we have our test URL, so we're good to go there. And actually, I think it's uh, it's going to get mad because now it's going to be waiting for that. Uh, so in this case, like I did, like I mentioned, um, we do actually need to have uh, an if statement, and then we're going to look for some data to say, uh, let's say, we're going to look for an is challenge node. So is not empty. And then I think we're actually just looking for something called challenge. And then we're going to respond to a, uh, there's a specific node called respond to webhook. So we're going to be prepared for that. Uh, and just, I think JSON is actually what we want, because we're actually going to be looking for a challenge value. And we'll plug that in later. Uh, but we need to be able to at least test this right now. So now that we've got this workflow going, um, I'm going to go ahead and wait real quick. So let's grab the URL. So just you can just click in here and that'll copy the URL. And if we go into monday.com and again, or whatever your uh, webhook platform that you want to set up, um, they actually have some nice templates, which is uh, pretty useful here. So if you look for webhooks, um, this is the one I'm going to example or just do as a demo. So when a status changes to something, send a webhook. So let's use that template. And I've already got my existing one set up, but I'm going to set up another one. So I'd say, let's use another account. And um, all I do is paste in the webhook URL that it didn't get me. And so I'm going to hit connect here in a minute. 
Uh, but first, we're going to listen for the test event. So we've got all our details set up. This is the test URL. Um, and you'll notice they do have webhook-test, which is also like a little bit annoying. We could probably just start with production if you wanted to skip the test. Um, so otherwise, you're going to have to do this twice. You have to set up both instances. But I'm going to go ahead and do this real quick for as an example. Uh, oh, uh-oh. Lost connection to the server. Uh-oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see if I can save this and restart. All right, there we go. So let's test this event. All right, cool. So now in it end is now listening for the webhook to fire. And this is going to fail because it needs a challenge. And I don't have it set up directly, but failed to communicate with the URL provided. Okay, that is a bit of an issue. All right, cool. So we this is mostly what I wanted. So I knew that they're, they're going to send a challenge body. And now we've got the data that we can actually reference. So now we can drag that in and reference that in this. So the first time we're running the webhook here, at least, to set up monday.com, we need the challenge. So I'm going to go down to the challenge body and say, okay, if challenge is not empty, uh, then we are good to go. So let's test that. All right. Then we can pass that data along and say, okay, cool. I know that this is a challenge. So this means just a test for now. So I just want to reply back with the challenge. So I could, I've already kind of cheated because I knew that was coming. So I'm going to go ahead and drag the challenge content into the quotes. So that way, I don't know why that doesn't work. Um, that way we send back the challenge and monday.com can verify that like this is the correct web uh, webhook and we are good to connect. So let's do that. All right, and then should be good to go on there. So now um, if we go ahead and we can test this again. So let's say test workflow and now try to connect. This should connect up and there you go. So that's all, and that's all we did here. So we have the if statement. Uh, the if statement is just checking for that challenge. So it's re re recognizing the path that this is actually a test first. Um, so once that's done, uh, it replies back to monday.com. It says, hey, we got your webhook. We verified you have the challenge. Here's your challenge back to say, like, we're allowed to do this. So cool. So now in this case, uh, the monday.com com, monday stuff here is a little bit arbitrary. So when status changes to, you know, whatever, uh, working on it, then we're going to send a webhook. So there we go. And then we go ahead and create that automation. Now, the only thing is that this is hooked up to the test URL. So if you wanted to do the production URL, we have to create a, another connection. Uh, so if we could come in here and say production URL and go ahead and copy that, uh, then same thing in monday.com. So, uh, and I think in this case, we actually would have to turn it on and test it, uh, test it live, unfortunately, because I think if you do test workflow, it's not going to let you run <laughs> with the production URL. It'll only let you run with the test URL. Um, so that's that's kind of a weird thing as well that I was not super not super thrilled with with the uh, NADN, just kind of a weird quirk. So, because if you look here and copy this, it says it's actually the test hook again. It won't let you copy the production URL, uh, which is a little annoying. So we can't actually execute the, the test one with production. I mean, probably good to not, uh, not separate the two, but unfortunately you do have to also basically test the connection on your production run so it's a little bit of a catch-22 uh, but if we were to run this in production then we actually need to have a different route here right so that's where uh i had set up uh, something else to say you know let's grab the monday.com data if it does actually connect correctly so we'll just say get a board and do my invoice board and then once we've done that uh then i was just connecting it to google sheets and said okay let's Grab the data from monday.com and append a row to the sheet. So I'll go ahead and connect to Google Sheets. I have an invoice updates sheet, and we'll go to sheet one. And then we're good to go. So, um, oh wait, actually, I want to double check, make sure I don't want to manually. I'll just do map automatically, and it'll just generate the columns for me. So I'm good to go there. Uh, so yeah, so I'm actually going to stop this. And to do the production, we're going to do basically the same thing. So I'm going to go ahead and save it. We're going to go live with it. And then we're going to have to kind of go through this on the fly. So I'm going to grab the production URL now. And then uh, what's going to happen is we're going to create a new automation. And do the same thing. So this will be the actual production one. So now we can use production URL. And now in this case, um, since we've got the workflow running, we don't need to, we don't need to test. Uh, it's actually live. Uh, and then it should hopefully respond correctly because we've already gone through the test version and 
built out the structure to handle that challenge data. Um, so it should come back live. So if we go ahead and actually just go ahead and run this, we should hopefully get a good, re good response. There we go. So again, uh, once the status changes, we're going to say, uh, say change to working on it. We go ahead and create automation. Uh, in this case, like, as you can see, I just, I just disabled the test webhook in that case, um, just because it's like, I don't, I don't need the test URL one to keep running. I just need the production one to run. Um, so now it's good to go. So now if we go back into monday.com and if I change this back to working on it, we should see an automation happen. So there we go. It's going to send that webhook back to N8N eventually taking its sweet time. There we go. Automation was completed. Uh, this should actually execute. And then we should get another another row in the spreadsheet because it actually ran. And we should be good to go on that. And if you want, um, something I, I don't always check, but you can actually come into the executions and you can kind of verify that like something actually happened uh, at about the time that we ran it. So we just had an execution run down through there and successfully execute all the way through. Um, so that's it. Uh, that's a high, high level overview of using a webhook in a specific scenario. Again, webhooks, um, are unfortunately, are going to vary platform to platform. Um, so this is just at least one example using money.com. Other, other platforms may be a little bit different, uh, but it's kind of a good example of where it can be a little bit more uh, complicated, where you actually need to run the webhook and then respond to the webhook to validate it the first time. And then after that, you're good to go. So uh, hopefully this is helpful. I will, I will include this webhook um, workflow in the link below. Uh, it might not be super helpful, but at least can kind of give you an example of how this might work. Um, and yeah, the rest of the workflow will be in, in the bottom in the description. Um, but uh, let me know uh, if you have any other questions or if there's any other workflows that you would like to see. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.